Breaking news, Larry is dead. He was killed off in season 35. What? You all remember Larry, don't you? He is one of our beloved regulars at Moe's Bar. No, that's Sam. This is Larry. He's the guy who fell over in that one episode. Okay, fine. Maybe Larry's death isn't the most earth-shattering event in Simpsons history. Killing off Larry and doing an episode about it is a pretty weird move. Then again, now that I think about it, The Simpsons has a weird history of killing off characters in general. And not always the good kind of weird. I don't know what it is about this show. The Simpsons is amazing at so many different things. But I'm not convinced The Simpsons handles death that well. Every example was either undermined by the writers in some way, or wasn't well received by the fans. So what's going on here? Does The Simpsons secretly suck at death? Or is the show's heart just not really in it? Today, let's look at all the characters they've killed off over the years. Surely one of these had to have gone well. I mean, as much as I'm about to slander them today, they did get off to a pretty good start. In the early days, they had folks die on occasion, but the first recurring character death was Bleeding Gums Murphy in Season 6's Round Springfield. Even then, Bleeding Gums barely qualifies as recurring. He had a spotlight in season one and showed up here and there, but this was really one of those bring back the guests to kill them sort of deals. But there's no denying that Bleeding Gums' death did provide emotional impact. Lisa's grief is extremely well portrayed. How heartbreaking it is seeing her go back to that bridge and later asking Marge, how come it won't stop hurting? We, the audience, only knew Bleeding Gums for one episode, and Lisa does a great job paying tribute and explaining what he meant to her. I'm not personally as high on this episode as others. Round Springfield is considered fairly average by classic era standards. But if we're asking if the Simpsons suck at death, Round Springfield is going to be your main counterargument. That being said, it's not like the Simpsons hung their hat on Bleeding Gums being a big deal. Remember, this was toward the end of Season 6, and it was onward to the Who Shot Mr. Burns cliffhanger. In fact, Round Springfield wasn't even a part of the David Merkin showrun episodes like the others. This was an Al Jean and Mike Reese joint, who was brought in to round out the production run. Even afterward, in the 138th episode Spectacular, we get this joke, saying Bleeding Gums was never popular. Obviously, this is just snark on the part of the writers, But this is what I mean about the show undermining its drama. It wasn't until much later when The Simpsons built up Bleeding Gums again, treating him like an important part of the show. This is a good segue into the second major death, Dr. Marvin Monroe. This snarky Season 7 joke confirmed it, but it was broadly hinted to in the season premiere, with the reference to Marvin Monroe Memorial Hospital. When I was little, I was totally confused when they suddenly said Dr. Marvin Monroe was death. Totally missed that Who Shot Mr. Burns thing. It happened because this voice was tough on Harry Shearer, so they retired him and killed him off screen. Of all the bizarre Simpsons deaths, maybe this is the most confusing because of its execution. He's killed off screen, it's confirmed in a clip show, then in season 15 he's not dead, but then he's a ghost again in a Trials of Horror and Flanders Ladder. Dr. Marvin Monroe is like the poster boy for the Simpsons' odd death tendencies. They picked a very minor character, made it clear how little they mattered, and then flip-flopped on whether it actually happened. We see some of these characteristics in the very next example, Maude Flanders. Maude was obviously much more important than Dr. Marvin, but you wouldn't think so with the way they killed her. So callously knocked off a grandstand by a t-shirt cannon, followed by Reverend Lovejoy's eulogy, characterizing her as an unremarkable supporting character. This eulogy has always rubbed me the wrong way. Like, Maude wasn't super popular and didn't have a catchphrase or anything, but this definitely read as The Simpsons downplaying her contributions because, I don't know, they were butthurt that Maggie Roswell moved to Colorado. Needless to say, Maude's death was not received well by fans at all and Alone Again Natura Diddly regularly shows up on Worst Simpsons Episodes lists. Interestingly though, despite Maude's questionable death not being popular with fans, the show did actually pay tribute to her through Ned's resulting character arc. 
They did several episodes showing his grieving process and his attempts to move on. They brought her back for a Trials of Horror and that Flanders Ladder episode, as well as various flashbacks. I think everything after Maud's death was handled pretty well by Simpsons standards. It's just the circumstances that caused it and how they went about it that sucked. Up next, we have Snowball 2, killed off in Season 15's I, Dobot. This is another death that had a mixed reception. This is more because of the B-plot in general, with how many cats get killed and how much Lisa is tortured. I don't mind this B-plot as much personally, but I understand why others would hate it. On the plus side, it does give Snowball 2 her flowers by showing how much Lisa loved her. Lisa is genuinely devastated. Despite Snowball 2 living with the Simpsons, this is another example of the series killing off an underutilized side character. They would never kill off Santa's little helper, but Snowball 2? Get that cat out of the way! And, typical of the Simpsons conventions, they decided to have their cake and eat it. Instead of a status quo shift, they swapped in Snowball 5 and pretended like this death never happened. From the point of view of the series, this black cat never died. The same could be said for the next two examples, as one falls in the who cares category, and one in the this never happened category. In season 18, they killed off Homer's Vegas wife, Amber, who had appeared in two episodes previously. Amber was less of a recurring character and more of a random loose end, so the series just used her death as a cheap opening set piece. A year later, at the conclusion of the Simpsons movie, they killed off Dr. Nick. And if you saw his Simpsons histories, you'll know that they brought him back pretty quickly. The movie doesn't count, I guess. Spider Pig, get out of here. Next on the death docket is Mona Simpson, killed off in season 19's Mona Leaves Us. This is one of the less contentious examples, as Mona didn't have the out of universe baggage that Maude did. Glenn Close is a celebrity guest who is harder to book so it would make sense that you would eventually want to write her off, especially for the emotional story possibilities you can do with Homer. We'd see her later in flashback episodes and elaborate Inception parodies to keep tugging on this story thread. In fact, they revisited Mona so many times that it makes me wonder if they regret killing her off. Who could have imagined the show would live on for another two decades? Unfortunately, Mona's death episode itself is pretty messy in terms of execution. I think Homer discovering her and his feelings of regret are extremely well conveyed. This episode is worth watching just for these scenes alone. But then in Act 3, it turns into this James Bond-esque adventure where Mona's real plan was for her ashes to somehow sabotage Mr. Burns? The whole grieving journey ended up being some improbable scheme by Mona? What? I get the instinct to tie in her activism and Mr. Burns, but what a convoluted way for this story to develop. Mona definitely falls in the weird execution, decent legacy category. I don't know what category to put Fat Tony's death. In season 22, he dies of a heart attack, and in the exact same episode, gets replaced by his cousin Fit Tony, who puts on weight and becomes Fat Tony again. Oh, I remember this trick. This is Snowball 2 again. You might say Fat Tony has nine lives. I've heard some fans defend the Fit Fat Tony thing, but generally this was not a popular switcheroo. This is the kind of shenanigan that lapsed viewers learn about, shake their heads, and feel vindicated in not watching anymore. Fundamentally, this is a joke death and its effectiveness is entirely dependent on how funny you think that joke is. Me? I liked it better the first time they did it. At least Fat Tony's death is one that people still kinda sorta remember, which we can't say about the next one, Alice Glick. Remember Alice? She's back, in corpse form. Yes, in season 23's Replaceable You, Mrs. Glick got the old heave-ho, being killed by a cuddly robotic seal made by Martin and Bart. As much as I'd like to suggest this was some kind of evil revenge from Bart, actually these funeral home guys sabotaged them. Anyway, it was kind of cool that this mostly irrelevant background character got one last moment of plot importance. However, they didn't even stick to this death, 
as Mrs. Glick has shown up in plenty of episodes afterward. Throw this one into the fun trivia, but who cares category. Edna Krabappel's death is an extremely special case, as it was directly caused by the real-life death of Marsha Wallace. Instead of getting the quiet retirement of Phil Hartman's characters, the series directly addressed this in an off-screen death. They had to do something, given her marriage to Ned. And, by and large, I think The Simpsons handled this one exceptionally well, given the circumstances. They paid tribute to her, made it clear how much she meant to the other characters, and even followed up on her legacy in later episodes. Oddly enough, the character death The Simpsons handled best was the one most out of their control. Writing off Edna could never be the cleanest thing ever, and let's face it, there will always be something awkward narratively about it, but The Simpsons rose to the challenge. I wish I could say the same about the penultimate death on this list, Rabbi Kristofsky. This one is complicated. So, Clown on the Dumps on its own isn't a bad idea. Killing off Rabbi Kristofsky and exploring his son's insecurities has some amazing possibilities narratively. It's retreading like Father Like Clown again, sure, but Krusty's grief and regret adds that extra layer that would make this story worthwhile. Unfortunately, the episode itself doesn't deliver on that excellent premise. Like, I don't think it's nearly as bad as some fans do. I wouldn't put it down with Alone Again Natra Diddly. For some reason, the Simpson writer's go-to grief story trope is to do an elaborate Act 3 fantasy in heaven. However, what was really annoying was the lead-up and how they promoted it. Oh man, did they tease this thing. First, hinting that the character who would die had won their voice actor an Emmy. Then, this little promotional graphic was made. Oh gee, I wonder who it's going to be. Will it be one of our beloved regulars, or this guest star character who rarely appears? This image is kind of a meme now, just because of how earnestly the show tried to hype this thing. Reminds me of when King of the Hill did that Megalomart explosion and hyped up who would die that whole summer. A for effort, guys. I will give The Simpsons credit, because it's clear with this recent death of Larry, they learned their lesson. Here's Matt Selman's tease in the lead up to Cremains of the Day. Okay, that is really damn funny. Say what you want about the writer's room, but they're clearly in on the joke. Killing off Larry the Barfly is an utterly bizarre decision that I would never have expected. But, like with Krastovsky, conceptually there is an interesting story germ here. How would the Moe's Bar crew react to his death? They spent a lot of time with Larry, but never knew him that well, and would feel guilty about it afterward. There are a lot of Larrys in the world, and it is a story worth telling. Unfortunately, I wasn't a fan of the application of this story concept. I think the first half is legitimately great, but then it turns into another saga of Carl road trip of distrust. The story stops being about their awkward feelings about Larry, and devolves into more interpersonal bickering, which is what we usually get with these guys. The episode doesn't even let Barney come along, or even acknowledge the surviving barfly, Sam. I don't know. You all know me, I've said a lot of nice things about the past few Simpsons seasons, but this episode was a swing and a miss for me. They got their cheap pop out of Larry, and went back to their usual playbook. I will say that it's utterly hilarious that co-showrunner Tim Long had to come out and apologize for killing off Larry. I run a Simpsons YouTube channel, and even I'm flummoxed that fans could be mad about this. I criticize the episode's execution, but they were respectful. Larry was barely a character on the show. I thought it was nice that they finally did something with him. Larry's death is obviously what inspired this video. I walked away unsatisfied, and then realized that almost all the Simpsons examples are unsatisfying for one reason or another. Maybe real-world circumstances tied the writer's hands, maybe it was questionable plotting, maybe the whole thing was a goof and didn't really matter. Maybe they pretended like the deaths never happened. I think Edna Krabappel and Bleeding Gums Murphys were handled the best overall, but even those have their share of awkwardness about them. So it makes me wonder, why do so many of these Simpsons deaths feel weird? Is this just a genre problem, 
where The Simpsons is so comedy driven that it struggles in the grief department? I don't think that's necessarily the case. I've been covering the recurring characters, but there have been plenty of one-off self-contained deaths that were handled extremely well. Think about Grimy. His death is the perfect culmination of Homer's enemy. Or how about Waylon Smithers Sr. in The Blunder Years? Or B. Simmons in Old Money? In fact, I would argue that B. Simmons is the best death in Simpsons history. It was so tastefully handled, portraying Grandpa's grief and pushing his story in a new direction. Like most sitcoms, The Simpsons can successfully pivot its stories after a character has died. No, I think this is a symptom of The Simpsons' episodic status quo format. Many of these episodes end up feeling like The Principal and The Pauper, where the core concept is compelling, but is better suited to a serialized TV show. These shocking twists can be built up better and pack a stronger punch for the audience. Whereas on The Simpsons, these feel more like random swerves, killing off random nobodies or guest star characters. Combine that with The Simpsons not wanting to get too heavy, and this is your result. We all joke about how this series just won't die, so maybe it's appropriate that this show doesn't deal with death very well. The Simpsons gods designed it to go on forever. They're devotees of the endless now. Permanently getting rid of characters is such an inherently foreign concept, I'm surprised they attempted it so many times. I do think, in looking at this list, you can get a good idea of what kinds of characters The Simpsons might kill off in the future. Like, if you're a fairly prominent secondary character, you're pretty much safe. The Simpsons will never kill off folks like Comic Book Guy, Chief Wiggum, or Cletus. It's not gonna happen. You should be looking in the Herman tier or lower. Folks who are around, but aren't used much these days. Maybe Charlie randomly dies in a Power Plant episode, they bring back Constance Harm to kill her off, perhaps they want to take Nelson in a new direction and get rid of Mrs. Muntz. Actually, given the patterns, being a parent on this show is not great for your long-term health. I am actually kind of shocked that Jacqueline Bouvier is still alive. They were thinking of killing her off back in the classic era. She is such a predictable choice for a Marge story that I kind of hope she lives forever now. Maybe she's safe because she already died in the Surfsons. The most prominent character I could even imagine The Simpsons killing off is Agnes Skinner. Just in the off chance of them wanting to do something with Principal Skinner someday. And even then, I would be absolutely shocked if something like that happened. Frankly, I don't think The Simpsons have the balls to kill off someone as major as Agnes. After all, if they kill off Agnes, they can't do overbearing mom joke number 1286. So we'll see. If the Grim Reaper does visit Springfield again, I hope it results in a meaningful story. There's gotta be a way to do one of these deaths right. I'm curious what you all think about how The Simpsons handled these. Do you think The Simpsons suck at death, or am I being too hard on them? Also, who do you think might be next on the chopping block? It really does feel like a small set of characters that are even feasible. I don't expect them to ever kill anyone remotely prominent, but it would be kinda cool to be proven wrong. As always, thanks for watching.